And we are now recording. Okay, well, hello everyone. Welcome to the meeting of the Amherst Energy and Climate Action Committee, uh, which was organized to guide the town in meeting its climate mitigation and resilience goals. Those goals and the plan for getting there are adopted from the Climate Action Adaptation and Resilience Plan or the CARP, which was accepted by the town council back in 2021. Uh, with 2016 as its base year, the CARP calls for a 25% reduction in carbon emissions by 2025, 50% by 2030, and carbon neutrality by 2050. The committee has two primary functions. One is to advise the town council and recommend or propose policies or actions to help us meet these goals. And the second is to promote a just, equitable, and speedy climate response through outreach and engagement of the town and local stakeholders. So that's where we are. The first item of business is always to find a note taker for today. And I had that in front of me. I don't know if I still have it in front of me. Who was the last note taker and who's next up, Stephanie? Apologies, our last note taker was Steve Roof. So let me just look at them. The minutes will have the order of note takers. Yeah, I Sorry. thought I had this stuff in my, I don't, this is weird. Sorry, just give uh, me a second. On the minutes from May 8th, below my name is Laura, and then Jesse, and then Don. So it looks like Jesse, you're on deck and at the plate all of a sudden. Yes. Does that work for you, Jesse? Okay, I have the agenda here. Absolutely. All right, cool. So just um, a point of note for this meeting, uh, Laura Drucker will attend, but will not be av available until five o'clock. And Don Allison is unavailable. Oh dear, okay. All right, so um, first thing to do is to review uh, and vote on the minutes. Uh, can I ask you to share them today, uh, Stephanie? I want to get myself organized. I just came from out of one meeting into another, and I'm not quite as organized as I should be today. Sure, just give me one moment. Okay, and let me share my screen. Okay. And if you want to scroll down through. There we go. Is there a move yet to um, accept the minutes? So moved. Second. I'll second. Nope. Okay, and I need a voice vote. Please ensure your microphone is open. Goldner? Yes. Breger? Yes. Selman? Yes. Roof? Yes. Issing? Yes. Okay, the minutes are approved. Next thing on the agenda is always public comment. And we have two members of the public present. Uh, Martha or Yanning, do you have, oh, three. Jonathan, do any, does anyone have a comment for us? Okay, if not, uh, we will go right to education and outreach. So, oh, sorry, Steve, 
I, I just had a little t technical question. Is it appropriate for us to identify the attendees by name? Because normally the public doesn't see that. And I just wondered, hmm, is that proper or improper? I hadn't thought of that. It is a public meeting. It is a public meeting and normally, yeah. yeah. But maybe I won't do that just to be polite from now on. Yeah, it, it probably doesn't matter. I'm just kind of curious. <laughs> And Typically, when people can when people comment, um, we call on them and we say their yes. name. So that's standard. And usually, when people are at public meeting, they often identify themselves and where they live. So, um, but I don't think that's necessary because this isn't a regulatory meeting. Right. I think you know, just identifying them by name. And I yes, anyway. I, that's true if they speak up, but they wish to speak up. But normally, a person attending even an in-person public meeting wouldn't identify themselves if they didn't wish to speak up. Yeah, maybe. I, I, I think it would be nice to only identify people if they wish to be identified. I, I, I think allowing people to come and watch without having their name have to appear in a public document seems I, like a more, op more open to me. Martha has her hand up now, so that's in someone who does want to speak. Should we, we're sort of, we haven't quite finished this agenda item yet, so why don't you go ahead, Martha? Yeah, well, no, I was just putting my two cents worth in that as a listener, it's often interesting to know, you know, how many listeners you have or who they are, but I understand Jesse's point that, um, you know, some people may not want to be uh, recognized, but certainly to state how many people are listening would be worthwhile. And um, that's all. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I, I would say that was our protocol in the uh, by, uh, solar bylaw working group meeting. We identified the number of public participants, but not di didn't name them. Um, okay. If they wish, if they wish to name themselves when they raise their hand to speak, I think we probably encourage that. Um, uh, but uh, but not to um, name them um, if they're just if they're just uh, listening in. Right. Okay. Then that seems that seems fine. All right. Um, I will adopt that. <laughs> now on a little more careful. Okay. So with that, on to education and outreach. Don is not here. Coordination with local groups. Um, so Tony is also not here. Um, hmm. Okay, so uh, I guess we can go on to heat pumps. Um, I don't have anything to add above last week except for in regards to the RFP, but that I think is an announcement from Stephanie, right? Or do you want to talk about it now? I can now rather than at staff updates. We'll just skip sure. over it. Um, so we did get uh, two responses to the RFP. Uh, Lori and I will be reviewing those uh, and get the information tomorrow. Uh, we will both um, independently review and rate them, and then we will convene together to discuss our ratings. We will then make a recommendation to the town manager. At that point, the price quotes will be opened, and then the town manager will make a decision. Um, certainly taking into consideration our recommendations, but is free to make the choice and decision themselves. But they will obviously take a recommendation into consideration. All right. So when will we have the, I, I noticed the email back and forth that there will be, we'll get copy. We, you and I will both get copies of the proposal. Is that right? Correct. Proposals? And we will have, right, and we will have a rating sheet. We will independently rate them, and you and I will come together, um, and we will review and discuss our ratings, and then we'll make a recommendation. Okay. All right. And what's the time time scale for that? But, well, you know, the time that we can decide that offline, but, you know, I think we'll want to, because there's two, I think we should be able to do it fairly quickly. Okay, good. Yeah. And this is a good week for me, so I have time. Um, Okay, good. So that's moving forward, which is great. Um, <clears throat> I haven't heard anything more about local, the local energy advocates group that's spinning off and doing the heat pump program in Northampton. I think they're still working on it. Um, and I don't have any other information there. So Climate Resilient Schools was also my name associated with it, but I haven't still haven't heard anything more through that group. I did want to have a chance going back to agenda item uh, 3B coordination with local groups. Um, I did want to have a chance to go through those groups and see if there were any 
um, synergy is already there. Maybe it's worthwhile just bringing up that document, even with Tony not here. Stephanie, what do you think? What do folks think? That just got sent in the last day or so, right? Sure. Um, do you do you want me to bring it up? Um, yes, because I don't have it in my folder handy. So why don't you go ahead and bring it up? It was multi-page, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, just give me a minute. This was just a list of local groups. Let's see if I can find it too. It was in my email, right? Okay, you can just tell me if you want me to scroll, Lori. Yeah, so Sunrise Movement, we know something about um, no fracked gas in mass. I'm not familiar with that group. If anyone knows anything about any of these groups or is active in them, um, go ahead and speak up. I'm just looking for obvious synergies. Um, other climate and energy groups in Western Mass, the Green Amherst Project. I actually not sure I know that one. Mass Power Forward, Green Future Now, Springfield Climate Justice, I know about Mass Divest. The Green, the Green Amherst Project, do folks know about that? I'd be interested to know more about what that is. Sounds like something we should know about, no? Uh, climate Action Now. Um, Definitely am on their mailing list, I believe. NE plan, pipeline awareness. We've been somewhat involved in that effort. Rise for social justice, Western Mass Solidarity, and Standing Rock, with Standing Rock. Co-op power. Anyone know anything about co-op power? Sound I old? work very closely with co-op power. What are they, Dwayne? Uh, they're cooperative and it's very quite active in west and um was formed and developed in in western massachusetts um but it's now works um statewide as well as to some extent nationally with collaborators um using um uh, business formations of cooperatives to bring energy projects um and energy justice to um particularly to uh and, and um, environmental justice and low income and um, BIPOC communities um, uh, in, in innovative ways. Uh, they've, um, they're the, the they, they serve as a solar developer as well. Uh, they were um, the solar developer behind the River Valley Co-op project on the uh, grocery store in East Hampton. Um, they've spawned a number of other cooperative companies like PV squared. Um, oh. and, um, uh, they, they also, um, the Northeast biodiesel project up in Greenfield is their, um, comes out of their efforts. Um, so they're, they're, um, quite active, uh, and are, uh, active particularly in, in solar development at this point for low income cooperative sort of structures. Lynn Benander is the prime person behind Co-op power. Sounds very relevant. Um, Resistance Center of Peace and Justice, Enviro Show, local radio show and environments events calendar, Cranberry Valley Workers Center, Western Mass Jobs with Justice, Climate Citizens Climate Lobby. I am a member, but I have not seen that they're terribly active around here. Um, maybe I just am not aware. I do get quite a few emails from them. Um, mostly just notifications of new members. <laughs> uh, UMass Elevate, neighbor to neighbor. UMass Elevate, I of course know about being at UMass. And then there's all the local um, churches. Um, and interfaith groups. Useful, very useful list. Hmm. Is Mothers Out Front on that list? Oh, it should be. Yeah, I'm not sure if I saw it. Yeah, I don't think I did. Yeah, really. Yeah, that one should definitely be on there too. 
We'll make a note. Yep. Well, for that and matter, guess... uh, local energy advocates should probably be on there too. I don't think that was there either. I have a question, more so of a question. The Sunrise Movement, um, I thought there was like a Amherst High School version of the Sunrise Movement, but this yeah. provides UMass. I think there is a UMass, UMass Sunrise too, but I thought there's something at the high school too. There, There is, I'm pretty <laughs> sure there is. So we should, um, because I know Julian was part of that. So yeah. we might wanna, um, Right, is Sunrise on here somewhere? Well, it's the first one, but it's, it's, it's local UMass chapters. Sunrise, yeah. Right, local chapters in particular, and also the Climate, climate Resilient Schools, was that on here? Mm, I don't think so. The local Sunrise chapters, just a few more to add to it when we get around. I'm thinking I might, I've been putting together a list of links that are useful to me as an energy coach. And I think I might put together another page of links to these sorts of um, efforts. Just to keep track of what they're up to, have a one place to go. All right, thank you for sharing that, um, Stephanie and Tony, who's not here. <laughs> Okay, on to advisory and support. Shall we move on? Mm -hmm. In the advisory and support category, we have the status of the rental bylaw, building efficiency bylaw. Um, Steve, do you have any uh, anything more? Oh, Sarah, anything more to say about that, Steve? Or are there any nothing? Other? Nothing new. Um, I did get a notice since I'm a landlord. I in town, I got a notice saying that the new licensing system will be available next month. They're sort of working on it. Um, but I'd be curious if Stephanie has any updates, if the, um, you were gonna, she was gonna have some conversations with inspections and see if they could get some of those questions added to the permit. Yeah, how did that go? Go ahead, Stephanie. So I did speak with the building commissioner, Rob Mora, and um, I think what we were asking for last time was clarification about, uh, because when he had said those questions could be included in the inspections, I think Steve, you were advocating that they actually need to be on the application itself. So I had that conversation with him and he said to prioritize in order three questions um, to be included on the application. So, I don't know if you want to independently do that, but I will need them as soon as possible. Um, it's not guaranteed all three, but just that's why I prioritize them. Like what is the absolute first main question you would like? Um, and then the other two. And you should all understand that it's a very lengthy application. So, and that was part of the reason why I think, um, and Steve, you'll know, <laughs> but I think that's, you know, why part of the reason that there was reluctance to include all of this um, because it did, the questions originally, there were several, which is why the idea was like, maybe we wanna shift focus and get it out of the rental registration bylaw and into something of its own is what is certainly how I see it, but um, it will take some work and some communication within the community, the broad community. And Steve is seeing that you are a landlord, it might be, um, you know, if we, if the group decides to move this effort forward to sort of draft something, I think as a landlord, you would be a good voice for yeah. speaking to other landlords, um, you know, apart from your role as in the ECAC. Are there, I mean, it would, might be useful to see the application. Are there any questions on there already that touch on anything about heating windows? bills what's on the application that touches on this already oh i'm going by memory there are questions i believe on the number of bathrooms and bedrooms um i forget the other questions in there i i couldn't 
I don't know if I have a copy of past applications, which would be different than what's going to be coming out next month. Uh, and I don't know that it's active any longer on the website. I think last meeting we noticed that it was a uh, not, not found because it was under revision. Although, uh, how about I'll take a look at that. I'll see if I can prioritize those top three questions and if I can find an example of what the application either used to look like or might look like, I can share that through Stephanie with everybody. And um, we'll go from there, I guess the, but you, Stephanie, you said you'd like that, they would like that top three question list pretty quick. Yes, and definitely before our next meeting. So okay. I I think um, if you, I, you've been the one working on this the most and everyone had sort of discussed, gone through all of the questions That's and fine. started to pick them out. So I'm sure you could choose the top three. Yeah, yeah I, I see three that have to do with the fuels that are used both for space heating and for water heating and the type of space heating system, whether it's electric baseboard, hot water baseboard, radiators, steam. So yeah, I, I see three questions that we could put in a prioritized list. I'll, I'll do that and send those to you, Stephanie. Okay, thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. And Jesse? Uh, I was gonna suggest, made a suggestion. <clears throat> um, feel free to override, Steve, as you're the one doing it, but it occurs to me that if, if we're not gonna get, we're not gonna get three questions, we're getting three, Prior, no sense in prioritizing if they could all be accepted. So, I, my instinct would be, what are the utilities serving the property and who pays it? And that's a binary. It's either tenant or landlord. And I think knowing those things would, in the absence of all the other information, that could be the best information to have if you're trying to plan and understand larger strategies. What are the fuels being supplied? So it's propane, oil, electricity, natural gas, and who pays those utility bills? Is it the landlord or the tenant? Because it's a very different strategy. So that's my pitch is what okay. are the fuels and who, and who pays the bills? Do with it what you will. Thank you. Yeah, yeah good point. Anyone else? If not, moving on to the solar bylaw. Uh, Dwayne, got any updates for us or Steve? I guess I would have one comment or one suggestion, I guess, is that um, and this the solar bylaw is somewhat out of our hand. It's kind of you know it, it it's in its own process right now. We will have hopefully the opportunity to provide some further input. I'm just wondering whether um, this section should not be strictly about the bylaw, but just solar generally. Sure. Um, yeah. Uh, not that I have anything to say about solar generally <laughs> today, no. but no, I don't think we have to focus on the bylaw. You know, we we can men mention it when there's some act activity that's happened since the last meeting. Um, I don't think we need to. But solar yeah. generally, what else is going on in the solar world? I think that's fine. Uh, I will change the agenda item next time to read solar and solar bylaw. <laughs> so is there any more, anything else we should know? Oh, yeah. Just, just CRC is continuing to work it over and um, try to sort it out. And uh, as I noted in the minutes from last time, sort of make it less redundant and sort out regulations that would separate, be, be better separated from the bylaw itself. They're fascinating meetings. They're fun to watch. Mm -hmm. The next one is coming up. When's the next CRC meeting? Um, I think it's next week. It is next Tuesday, the 28th at 6.30 p.m. I'm not positive this, the yes, solar bylaws on the agenda for that meeting, but that's the next CRC meeting. Okay, on my... I can confirm that it is on the agenda as staff has been asked to support them in this process. So 
Chris Prestrup and I have been attending these meetings. Right. Um, and I will say that typically they don't they don't create regulations. Right. Usually the permit granting authorities are the ones that create the regulations. However, because of the way the bylaw was written and the the perspective of some of the CRC members, that's why these particular different categories were parceled out. Um, but the idea is that they could still be put together as a package so that when the council reviews them, they can submit them to the permit granting authority as some recommended regulations and special conditions. So those aren't something that typically have to be the the regulations and the and the special conditions aren't required to be adopted by the permit granting authority, but they will be, because there's been so much discussion, it's likely that they will be incorporated. I, I would be surprised greatly if they didn't um, at least have some discussion about, around the mm -hmm. regulations um, and including all of them. Right. Okay, anything else in the world of solar outside the bylaw to talk about, Dwayne? You have a... Um, I was going to mention it, the um, member updates, I guess, but I just quickly mention, um, again, the Solar Forum, part two is Jan uh, June 4th, fully uh, virtually on Zoom. Amongst our confirmed speakers is our own Steve Roof, and thank you, Steve, for um, agreeing to be a, a panelist, um, and, and uh, particularly with your expertise and you know deep knowledge of the decarbonization roadmap and how solar fits into that uh and the need of solar um uh across various different siting so that'll be an important contribution um we're about to update our website a bit to um list the confirmed speakers to date uh we're still working on that uh but they're coming in relatively well uh at this point um, and then separately, uh, just Steve, I'll reach out to you and the other panelists on your um, panel um, separately, just to help get you get you guys organized. Okay. But um, sign up if you if you'd like to, to join us. It'll it'll be recorded, uh, so if you can't make it June fourth, um, uh, you can listen to it later at double speed <laughs> if, if you want <laughs> okay tony's not here so we don't have a transportation update um unless anyone else has a transportation update um regional and state policies i had a couple things hang on a minute if i can find them There were two things I promised to report back on, and I can't think of what they were. They were in the minutes. Um, <clears throat> what was the thing? There we go. Three-year plan, heat smart. Oh, the act. I couldn't find my notes. I'm going to have to punt on this. Um, I did go to a meeting about what the town of Acton has been doing in the way of decarbonization. And I took notes and I went to look for them and I couldn't find them. And so much has happened in the last two weeks. I don't trust myself to get it right. So I'm not going to talk about that today. Um, I did also go to a local energy advocates meeting yesterday um, talking about uh, uh, climate leader communities. And I think I need to let Stephanie talk about this one because there was some confusion about this. Um, according to Chris, hang on a minute, um, local energy advocates. Oh, where did my document go? Okay, this is annoying. 
it's in my other on my other computer, isn't it? Yes, it is. Okay, great. Um, sorry about that. I'm a little discombobulated today. The uh, local energy advocates had a speaker, Chris Mason. Yes, Mason. Okay, um, talking about this uh, climate leader program, which he gave the impression um, was about to be launched, had not been launched yet for want of advisors. But Stephanie and that and that he seemed to think Amherst had already. We're not. Lori, I'll give an update uh, as my staff updates, because okay. I, I don't want to put misinformation out there about this program because it's okay. pretty hot. <laughs> yes. OK. It's lots of communities want to be. And so I don't want to put misinformation out there. OK, so I will um, let Stephanie talk about that. It really I got a lot of information about what's involved in it. And it sounds very exciting really exciting actually for communities involved and in that it means less paperwork and more money to put it bluntly. <laughs> if I, if I understood correctly, less paperwork and more money for doing green things. Um, so that's pretty exciting. Uh, but I'll let Stephanie talk to that. Okay. So I don't have any other updates. Um, the, Network geothermal thing, I did want to mention, uh, it's not network geothermal, Laura's not here today. Laura is here. Oh, she Laura's just here? joined. I'm oh, here. Laura's here. Yay. Hi, Laura. Hello. Um, do you have anything to add on this network geothermal? Um, no, why don't you share? I don't have anything to add. Um. Other than I did see an article about this just the other day, so I'm gonna try to find it. Um, and I do think it potentially um, might be interesting to think through. I mean, we have a couple examples of these programs running in Massachusetts or getting ready to run in Massachusetts. So I'll make a note to like do another dive to see where they are and maybe getting someone to speak to that would be helpful for this group. Um, and I, um, I, I'm going to, uh, if I can take a break in a second, I want to get my notes. But uh, one thing that's interesting to me is I have a neighbor who has a grant that I was unaware of through Mass CEC, and they are putting geothermal in at her place. She's currently picking between two companies, it's a whole process where they provide advice and coaching and uh, money and or financing, I'm not even sure which. And uh, it's been fascinating to watch. I have a lot of information from her. I was completely unaware of this program, but um, it's, and I think there's going to be future rounds of it too, because it looks like they're trying to figure out how to do this right, how to retrofit for geothermal. Um, it's quite expensive, and uh, I, I wanted to report on it, but um, my notes are also in the other room. So maybe as uh, Stephanie starts to do her updates, I'll just, I might just run out for a second to get those notes, and I can give an update later. Um, but that is, I did speak with that neighbor. I mentioned this at an earlier meeting, and I did have a long conversation. Uh, and it's actually quite fascinating what, what she's doing and what the choices are. Um, that has to be made. All right, so I think we're at staff updates and I think that's the media's part of today's meeting is my guess. <laughs> so go ahead, Stephanie. Okay, um, I'll backtrack from the Climate Leaders Program. So I actually have been reporting to you all uh, at the last several meetings about this opportunity. It's through Mass D DOER's Green Communities Program. It's kind of like the Green Communities 2.0 if you will, so that it actually, the, the Green Communities Program, there's kind of a limitation on the funding that you can get. Whereas if you become a climate leader community, you'll actually be able to um, access greater funding to do much bigger projects. For example, my question during one of the information sessions was, will there be funding that will assist historic buildings because they're very expensive to retrofit. And I was told it may not completely cover an entire project, but it will substantially assist. Right now, the maximum one could request for a decarbonization project of a building is $500,000. So it'd be possibly even more than that. So I thought that was really exciting. 
There are six criteria required to be uh, designated as uh, a community, a climate leader community. We have um, already uh, met four of those criteria. The outstanding two are the building decarbonization roadmap or the decarbonization roadmap. And the other is to pass a zero vehicle or zero, zero emission vehicle first policy so that all new vehicles are zero emission vehicles that are purchased in the community. So that policy needs to be passed and adopted before the application. Um, so then, so we were not going to be able to fulfill either of those in this most recent round um, of designation. So I think I mentioned to you all that we're shooting for December. And as far as the building decarbonization roadmap, I applied for technical assistance to DOER for this, and we were actually awarded assistance. So, and I don't know if I actually was able to announce that at the last meeting, because I think I just found out about that after our last meeting. So that means we're getting technical assistance to help us develop that roadmap. And we will be, um, I think that's, Lori, what they were referencing in terms of finding vendors or contractors to assist with helping communities that have been awarded this technical assistance. So that award, that was a competitive process um, that is probably what Chris was referring to. There was so there was um, there was a designation round application or application round which we did not submit, and we were only awarded the technical assistance at this point. So in December we'll apply for the designation. So what has me confused is that uh, Chris showed an example of what Ashfield passed to, and, and I'm sure he said they were. They had been chosen as one of the communities, but it was only uh, he also he also incorrectly got Amherst in there. So I, but he he showed what they passed at their I don't know if they do a town meeting or what to become eligible and to deal with the uh, vehicle the zero uh, zero emissions vehicles and this sort of thing. And it was a one liner. It was a really simple I don't know if it's a bylaw or what that just said the town of Ashfield commits to uh, being fossil free free, fuel free in their uh, buildings, tr transportation and everything, you know, one other thing, I don't remember what it was by 2050. Yep. Because the requirement is, and that's all it was. It was a one-liner. It was the yep. easiest thing to say. Yeah. And I don't, I don't, it's just a matter, it has to go, this has to go through both the town council and the school district. They have their own separate vote. So it has to pass both. So um, and this was true when we became a green community. There was a similar green fleet policy that we had to adopt and have passed at both the council level, or well, then it was the select board level and at the school committee level. So it's not complicated. I'm working on it. Those are things that are on my to-do list for this summer. And in fact, as I said, I we got the award for the roadmap, which is probably the bigger piece that's going to take some time. And if you recall, this roadmap creation is what we had been potentially partnering with the um, clean energy extension on. Uh, we were going to work with Ben Weil, but Ben actually accepted a position uh, in mm -hmm. Northampton. So it kind of created a, a snag for them to be able to provide this assistance. So that's so originally we weren't even going to have to apply for the technical assistance. But because that happened, I had to scramble and very last minute pulled the application together, submitted it, and we did get granted the, the technical mm -hmm. assistance. So Chris, may have, maybe part of what you were hearing, Lori, was both communities that may have received designation. I'm not even sure because I wasn't I didn't attend that meeting and I had, didn't hear what Chris had to say. And there's been no formal announcement at all yet, even for the technical assistance awards. I received notification just via email, but I didn't receive anything beyond just an email. So I'm not sure if something's, you know, there's likely going to be a contract that's going to come with that. So I haven't got anything more official than that. Um, so it may be some of the communication was just sort of confusing and that it was referencing two separate things. Yeah. It also sounded like the um, the things that need to be decarbonized are municipal buildings. It specifically is right. about municipal buildings, yes. not about residences. Correct. Right. Which is the same as the Green Communities Program. Our 
the 20 percent reduction um, over our baseline year, which we have met the last three years as a participating green communities, uh, green community or designated green community, um, we've met over the past years and that, you know, definitely had um, very specific uh, targets and information and it'll be, this is just more of the same. It's just different. It's just at a different level. Yeah, I, I'm I'm also surprised because uh, he, it was I thought pretty clear that the uh, bar for being a climate leader did not require the plan you're talking about to actually be in place, just the commitment to be in place. And there's a every three years the plan needs to be reviewed. Correct. Renewed. Correct. But it didn't need to be in place to be. Maybe, maybe that's where my misunderstanding or maybe. Well, there's different, this is the decarbonization plan that is only specifically for municipal buildings. And yes, that right. has to be revisited. Um, That's what I, was I think each year, actually, it, the way it was written was, it, they might have changed it, but at least it was, it was stated pretty much annually that we had to re revisit this. So I don't mm. know if that's changed, but. He said that green communities, it was every year, but climate leaders, it was every three years. Right. Well, in the application, that wasn't what I read, but that's okay. So, I mean, that, again, that this may or may not have changed. All right. Um, but because that is something that I certainly notice <laughs> because okay. I'm typically the one that has to do that work. So. Well, congratulations um, on getting the grant <laughs> for the help. And uh, I, this is a very exciting thing, right? Because it really does. Yeah, this is great. I mean, we're we're so close, you know, was, to. Yeah, to being able to achieve that designation. So it's just a matter of what we can get done. You know, I mean, we'll get it done with the assistance of, uh, with the technical assistance, we'll get that done. And again, as you pointed out, you know, the zero emissions vehicle first policy, the language is not hard. The implication of what that language means though, has to be considered by the bodies that need to vote on it. And so keeping in mind that this is things like school buses. So I, you know, it might be a little bit of a of a of a challenge getting it through the school district, but I, you know, I'm hopeful. Yeah, he, but he I think he also said that the intention wasn't to break the bank. That to some extent, you know, not all vehicles are available as EV right. or even exactly. hybrids yet, or even hybrids yet, right? Right. So that the idea was that the commitment is there, and as vehicles become available and funding becomes available, he didn't want to break the bank either, right? Right. And this is actually a good segue for me to talk about another thing. Um, there is um, uh, the intention of the state, or, well, I should say the state is considering applying for funding for transitioning heavy duty vehicles, class six and seven vehicles to zero emissions. Um, so it would help provide funding to communities on a competitive basis um, but it would it would apply for some of that federal funding to do so um, in the range of like you know millions of dollars so that that was just basically a survey to sort of understand what the inventory is of vehicles and that you know uh, within the state across the state preference would certainly be given to communities that have um environmental pollution, air pollution issues. So, um, but in any case, it's just right now, it's just a survey to sort of identify the, you know, what the potential is. And so the state is considering that. So I'm working on responding to that survey right now. So it's due next week. So that's another potential, you know, there that's a potential funding source that we might be able to pursue, uh, hopefully once that, um, process moves forward. And then I think other things I will just say very quickly, um, I think I announced the Drop Mobility is the um, vendor for Valley Bike. We had a meeting with them last week. Um, they are actively going to be getting uh, bicycles back out on the streets. So that's really exciting. I don't know when Amherst is you know, going to be teed up for that, but it's coming. And then for the community choice aggregation, we had a meeting with our consultant, Mass Power Choice, also last week. Um, they are putting together a bit of a timeline in moving forward. Um, it's going to require the um, 
executives in each community to sort of review that timeline and decide what their availability is. Uh, and then we're going to have a follow up uh, meeting to sort of move that process forward. But the launch could come you know, either towards the end of the summer or beginning of the fall, I don't anticipate it's going to be in June. I know that was kind of like a timeline that was thrown out there as the the earliest it could launch, but I think that's maybe a bit soon for um, for the communities and outreach. I think we're going to want to um, not rush it so quickly, and I'm going to have a conversation with the town manager uh, soon, I hope, regarding this. So those are all my updates for now. Great. Thank you, Stephanie. Wow. <laughs> All right. Um, ECAC member updates. Go ahead, Jesse. I, um, after five wonderful years on this committee, will have talked to Stephanie earlier this week and will be hanging up my, my hat for this one at the end of this um, at the month of June, which gives me this meeting plus two more. And I don't think it would be fair to try to capture everything in brief words, but only to say that I've continually been impressed with everyone and all the hard work um, and, and been honored to be a part of this team and look forward to maybe coming back at some point in the future. But I just have a little more on my plate than I can do and, and also feel like this committee is in very good position right now um, as far as leadership and new membership and hopefully even more. And given all that, it seemed like, as my dad used to say, leave a party when you're having fun. <laughs> so. Oh, dear. So it don't worry. It's not going to affect you. <laughs> I'm yeah. not actually doing that much. <laughs> But you've been such a huge uh, contributor, and I know you're not the only one. I see uh, Dwayne has his hands up. Why don't you go ahead, Dwayne? Yeah, um, hard news. I don't. I don't have a hat on, but I'm, I'm hanging my hat up to, hanging my hat up to at the end of June. Um, I think, Laura, were you you were a, a original member too, weren't you? Yeah. So I think Laura and I are the only. And Steve. And Steve. And Steve. Okay, original. No, I'm. I'm beating you guys to, to the to the end line, but um, I'm also going to um, at the end of June of my th current three year term. Um, and just to echo what Jesse said, I mean, this has been wonderful to work closely with all of you and the predecessors on this committee uh, serve the town. Uh, but as I mentioned to Stephanie in my email to her uh, stating my desires that uh, as with Jesse, I mean, I think uh, just over the last year with, with Lori coming in, but also even less than a year um, with the other new members, uh, there's some really good new energy and passion and ideas coming forward that I think, uh, you know, I'm eager to uh, let those flourish um, in town uh, and for the town. Um, as I also mentioned to Lori and Stephanie, I'm not going anywhere. I'm still a resident um, and I'm a resource uh, as needed, um, but I'll, um, I'm also going to step down. Dwayne, I can't even, both of you, I can't even begin to express how much we're going to miss you, um, but maybe we can, uh, you know, and we're also, we have one other person whose term expires at the end of June that we haven't heard from yet, I think, right, Stephanie? It's, um, it's actually Don, and yes, we have heard from him, and he is willing to be reappointed. So it leaves us with three vacancies because we currently have a vacancy. I have, um, just so you are aware, I have uh, alerted um, Angela Mills, the executive assistant to the town manager who often coordinates all of the um, filling these vacancies on all of the town committees. So we are not the only committee whose terms end at the end of June. So she was scrambling with a very long list but we'll get us um, information soon so that we can try to fill those vacancies sooner than later. Yeah, so I think all of us need to reach out to our networks at this point in the area and encourage people we know to apply. So, uh, you know, Dwayne and Jesse, you too, <laughs> if you know someone, 
um, please reach out. Uh, your expertise is going to be very, very hard to replace. Um, so that that would be that would be great if you know someone who might be willing. Um, yep, Steve. I was just going to ask Jesse and Dwayne, are you guys going to be moving on to other things like maybe running for town council or <laughs> joining the planning board? <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> I'll, I'll help you if you are going to do such a thing. I, um, I, that's, uh, that's a great question. Um, not in the short term, I'm more taking care of my parents and children. And, um, it, this is, there's a lot of, it, this is which for me, I think is a family thing. Um, but I love the idea of staying involved in the long term. Um, particularly, I think if building committees come up in this town, um, that's something I think I'd be well suited for, Stephanie, as I know we have many projects coming, potentially. Um, so I cannot quite imagine town council being something. I, I admire those people too much. <laughs> they have a level of patience and um, uh, fortitude that I don't think I do have. Yeah, on my end, um, no such plans. My, I have a really busy year, year and a half coming up um, before, um, as I've informed people at the university, I retire. <laughs> uh, uh, so um, after after such retirement, um, there may be an interest and in, in desire and availability to get reinvolved in in some ways with my town. Um, in the meantime, uh, I got a kid that needs help with his my grandkids, um, which is uh, a big priority. Um, uh, but then also just this transition with the clean energy extension while I'm um, sort of transitioning out um, oh. is kind of filling my plate for the coming year. Yeah, with Ben not there too, I would imagine that's an even bigger job. Yeah, that was an interesting uh, piece of information to learn. Ben Ben loves his jobs. He took a temporary job, and he loved it so much. He's uh, he's yeah. sticking it out, making a career change. But it's exciting for him. Yeah. 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 So um, Stephanie, with three vacancies, we will still have a quorum, but only if all other members are present. Yeah, you'll have six members. So. Um, you know, ostensibly one of you would miss a meeting, you'd still have a quorum. But, oh, okay. you know, the margin is much smaller now so that yeah. if two people of the remaining members can't attend a meeting, then it means that we wouldn't be able to have the meeting, we wouldn't have the quorum. I will mm -hmm. ask you all actually, which would be really helpful. Um, I'll send out an email, but if I could get your vacation schedules for the summer through September, um, I will send that as an email. And then I'll put together a calendar and send it to everybody so you can see who's away when. Okay, so send vacation schedules to Stephanie. Yes, I'll I'll send an I'll send an email request. Okay. Um okay uh other ECAC member updates Go ahead, Steve. I'll give an update. Um, I'm not retiring from the committee yet, first, <laughs> before anybody gets too scared. Um, I just learned this morning that at Hampshire College, the Board of Trustees last week adopted the Climate Action Plan that I had a hand in developing this past academic year. And so it's become the guiding policy of the college. No, so I'm very, very pleased with that. And we'll continue to be working with my colleagues over there to uh, help implement that plan. Excellent, excellent. Oh, it's good to see things slowly change, hopefully faster in the future. Other updates? Okay, is there anything we want to put on the agenda? Anything on your minds? Anyone? You know, uh, Michael, there's something you want to see on the agenda or 
Laura, Steve, Jesse, well, Twain, for your last couple of meetings. Anything you want to see on the agenda for the next meeting that we haven't already touched on? It's not on the usual agenda. Just to say, I'm sorry, I've missed a couple of meetings. I've been, it's been very busy at work and travel schedule has not been kind to ECAC schedule. Um, but I, yeah, I feel like I need a jolt of energy <laughs> or something, something to focus on with ECAC. So I'll put, I'll put my own agenda item on to figure out what that could be. Yeah. Um, and and focus on that yeah. but we have a lot of town things that we need to chime in on oh last time we were going to talk about now don's not here but maybe we should don has not been here quite a bit so perhaps we should talk about what we're going to do for this uh we had talked about putting another presentation together about pace stephanie was there any update on that no not yet okay uh, because I would like to see us do something with the business community. We talked about reaching out to, um, what about reaching out to? Uh, it's Apple. mass development. Uh, mass development there. But what about Apple, uh, Apple Wood, Apple Gate, Apple, what's it called? Apple Wood. The community. The, there was a suggestion about reaching out to them regarding interest in um decarbonizing their property yeah that was uh, uh yeah good reminder that was on me um nothing to report <laughs> except i haven't i haven't done that yet yeah um, i mean there there are other things i could imagine us working on right everything from from trying to figure out how to maybe get a really community-owned solar in in Amherst, right? Or something like that uh, to benefit uh, the environmental justice community or there's a lot of projects we could take on and, and sort of do the groundwork for. And the question is, what do we want to take on? I mean, I still think there's a really good opportunity to try to get a group of non-taxpaying entities together to talk about all the opportunities that are within the IRA for them. Um, I just don't have the bandwidth to do that on my own, but if somebody wanted to work on that with me, mm -hmm. maybe we could plan something for the fall um, where, and maybe we could even get Sarah Ross or someone else to come in that has more expertise on the IRA and the, and, and, the rebates available there um, to speak to it. But in the in the interest of getting more solar on rooftops and non-land, non-land-based solar, I think it could be, I think that could be one step towards that goal. Um, and not a hard step to do. It's just identify. And I have a, I have a half list started of people identified and, and maybe in the, the one thing that I was hoping honestly, is that we could get some partnership with other community groups. So I think if, um, Lori, if you're attending these, and I, I know Steve, you've attended them in the past two of these energy, um, groups, I'm blanking on the full name. Local um, energy advocates. Yeah. That's one like, that I only once I've been there, but I go there pretty regularly just to see. Yeah, I mean, if they wanted to help us organize it or, you know, co-host it with us or co-host it with Sunrise Amherst or co-host it with, you know, some other group, I think that would get more attention yeah. to it um, and put less pressure on us to to do all the organizing. Yeah, LEA is looking at doing a uh, project in Northampton, but they've been talking to municipal housing in Northampton or not, or, you know, public housing in Northampton. Um, and that's uh, a little bit different. That wouldn't really be in our purview, but maybe there's something we can do together. Um, but that was part of the uh, interest in Applewood that they came to someone and asked about, I don't remember how that was generated, but they were asking about geothermal, I think in particular. 
Um, and they're a nonprofit. So that was how that, that discussion came up. Mm. So I know they would be interested or we think they would be interested. It's not clear if it was one person or the group or I think, like I say, Dwayne was going to reach out. Dwayne, if, if you have too much to do and you want to ask someone else to do that, just let us know. Um, I can still try to get to it. Um, I will say that, you know, I, I do have this um, proposal well out, out to Nathan Cummings Founda Foundation for a community owned solar project with the um, connected with the um, uh, African Heritage Reparation Funds for the town of Amherst. Um, that potential is also incorporated in a broader proposal with five other towns around Western Mass um, to do local own ownership models um, with um, municipalities or um, nonprofits associated with municipalities. Um, we're targeting that I've just resurrected that again, but I'm waiting. Uh, and we have Franklin County CDC involved with that, UMass 5, uh, College Credit Union, Federal Credit Union, Co-op Power, uh, the towns. Um, and we've also now uh, working to incorporate economic development of Western Mass to bring in the gateway communities of potentially Holyoke and Springfield with the idea of compiling that all together as a Western Mass local ownership solar um, proposal to pitch in front of solar of the solar for all monies that Massachusetts now has um, and is programming. Um, uh, but there's a long ways to go uh, to get that all um, put together and get everybody to <laughs> sign off on moving it forward. Uh, and then I'm not, you know, I, I'm not sure what the state, the state has all the solar for all money fairly well programmed out and whether they're open to non uh, somewhat unsolicited ideas. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. Interesting that, you know, if there's anything we can do to help with any of that, um, let us know. And as an individual, if there's anything I can do, let me know. <laughs> yeah. Well, when, when, it, when I get the go ahead from, so the Western, uh, the, the um, economic development, um, Council, I think it is of Western Mass and S Springfield, Holyoke, and combine it with the other group from more rural Western Massachusetts. Then I'll have a sort of short proposal to so sort of start marketing around, uh, and then um, then maybe it's the time to get sort of the town committees like ECAC to express interest. Right. I will say we just got a notice from Nathan Cummings today that um, they're delayed in making uh, decisions because they've been overwhelmed with applications, um, 2,000 applications. Um, so I, I think we have about a 1% <laughs> chance <laughs> just from the raw numbers. But if we do get awarded, we got one good proposal. <laughs> no. No. Time to... Yeah. Hmm. Oh, all right. Well, it's good. It's good and, and bad at the same time, right? It's good that there's so much interest in this, but um, hopefully the proposal will be reusable in other contexts. Well, yeah, and I'm, I'm, I mean, certainly separate from all that. Um, one thing that I've been focused on in clean energy extension has been cracking this nut for local ownership. Uh, so if there's apart from that. Um, apart from these proposals and for Amherst, apart from the reparations, uh, if there's other um, opportunities to bring forward some projects uh, or ideas or people to talk about that, um, I, I'm certainly interested in um, helping with that. Cool. Any other updates? Or actually, we were on items for the next meeting agenda. <laughs> this was all under items for the next meeting agenda. So good, lots of lots of interesting things going on. Um, if not nothing else, I think we're up to public comment. Uh, Martha has her hand raised. 
Martha, you can go ahead and unmute. Okay, thank, thank you. And a uh, couple of things. First of all, Stephanie, congratulations on your hard work and getting the uh, the uh, help for now for the um, the building roadmap and so on. I think that's great. And so moving forward, I did have a question then about the uh, commitment to electric vehicles. So it seemed a little confusing. Does that include things like DPW and their heavy instruction commitment? As they become available. I mean, obviously they can't replace a vehicle with a zero emissions vehicle if it doesn't exist. So I think the idea is that as the technology becomes available, that would be the commitment. Mm -hmm. And what about uh, riding lawnmowers? I mean, the electrical ones are available. Is the town thinking of replacing their electric lawnmowers? I mean, of their gas powered lawnmowers? I, it would seem to me that that would be in the realm of what we should be considering. So, um, you know, I would I would assume yes. Yes. Okay. I know Amherst Nursery uses electric powered ones. And, uh, uh, and then a uh, question for Dwayne, for the Solar Forum, I was wondering whether you're planning to have any talk or discussion about the build out of the electric grid in Massachusetts. I mean, I'm still feeling stunned about how we learned in our solar bylaw working group that it's a million dollars a mile to hitch up if the uh, right kind of transmission lines aren't readily available if you're trying to have a, uh, you know, place a, a ground mounted solar array. And so that really does influence where developers want to place their arrays rather than based on the suitability of the actual site. And so it seems that that's a real important issue. And I was hoping that 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 would be something that would be able to be included in this forum. I don't know. I think there is a state agency that works on that, or maybe even ISO New England would have um, some information to present. Um. There's not, I would say there's not a, a panel specifically about that where we, we, there's only a four four panel panels. Uh, I think a number probably touch on that. The panels are organized about sort of, or some of them about balancing various trade-offs associated with solar development and certainly the issue about uh, where to site solar and trading off building, building addition, the cost and building additional distribution lines to get to places that are might be better sites. I think that will come up in the discussion uh, and in, in the panel. Um, there also, and I can't really, there the, the forum will start with a um, overview of the Siting Commission's recommendations from EEA Undersecretary, and then um, comments on the pending and developing legislation around these siting recommendations um, from the uh, two uh, chairs of the Telecommunications Utilities and Energy Committee. Uh, so I suspect their remarks may um, touch on those issues as well, because as you say, they're um, part of the solar siting um, issues that need to be um, balanced and, and resolved. Yeah, I was disappointed that the Solar Siting Commission didn't put more emphasis on that need, because it seems to me it's something that's really important and really needs to be done at the state level. It's not something individual communities can do much on. Well, yeah, there is a, a, a separate, and I'm not that familiar with it, but there's a grid modernization um, committee or commission, I don't yeah. know. That's uh, what I was wondering, whether they might be able to to give com some kind of a, a report or participate somehow so that we could all learn a bit more. Um, yeah, not not so much in our forum. Uh, I mean, obviously there there may be some overlap. I can read. I can uh, look at the membership of that to see um, if there's anybody that we've reached out to um, mm -hmm. uh, that are, is also on that committee. Um, but. Um, uh, but you might, you know, I, that that's probably more of the forum or commission to uh, follow mm -hmm. with regard to that work. Mm -hmm. 
you know, it's not like you don't have anything else to do, right? Well, between now and the forum, I do. That's what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> Yikes. Okay, well, thank you. <laughs> and thank you to those of you who are leaving the committee after um, all your years of putting in the efforts. And good luck to the committee going forward. Thank you, Martha. Um, any other comments? We have just two people in attendance. So if you have a comment, as always, raise your hand, raise your virtual hand. And if not, then I believe the next agenda item is adjournment. Any um, objection to adjourning? If not, I'll see you all in two weeks. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.